Schalke are the joint third most successful team in the history of German football, tied with Bayer Leverkusen having both won 15 major trophies and trailing only Bayern Munich and their bitter rivals Borussia Dortmund on 77 and 21 major trophies apiece. Schalke enjoyed particular success during World War II and in the immediate pre-war period, winning six out of a possible nine German championships between 1934 and 1942 leading to many false allegations that Hitler must have been a Schalke fan and that somehow the scales of German football had been unfairly tilted in their favour during that time. In truth, there's no evidence to suggest anything of the sort. Schalke just happened to enjoy a golden age during Germany's darkest era. Schalke's success isn't just ancient history though. The Royal Blues were Bundesliga runners-up to Bayern Munich as recently as the 2017-18 season, their fifth second place finish since the year 2000. They have reached the UEFA Champions League semi-finals within the last decade and they were named by Forbes as the 14th most valuable football club in the world in 2014, ahead of the likes of AC Milan, Inter Milan and Roma and just one place behind their river derby rivals Borussia Dortmund. And yet, here we are in 2020 with Schalke at the foot of the Bundesliga table and in serious danger not just of relegation but insolvency and total financial collapse. Following a 3-0 thrashing at the hands of Bayer Leverkusen at the weekend, Schalke are now without a win in a club record 26 Bundesliga games. It's little wonder then that for the last few months I have been bombarded with requests to make a what on earth is going on style video about Schalke. And whilst I have followed the club's plight over the last 12 months before researching this video, I didn't quite realise the uniqueness of Schalke and how perilous their current predicament really is. It's pretty wild, so sit down, strap in, and join me on our journey to examine how things have gone so wrong at the Veltins Arena. This time last year, things were looking pretty good for Schalke from the outside looking in. Following a bitterly disappointing 14th place finish in the 2018-19 season, coming just one season after the club had finished second in the Bundesliga, manager Dominico Tedesco was sacked. His replacement, David Wagner, had plenty to prove. Part of Schalke's 1997 UEFA Cup winning side, Wagner had spent the last four years managing Huddersfield Town, where he had overachieved by taking the team into the Premier League, but lost his job with Huddersfield in last place in the division and eight points from safety. Wagner is a man with a deeply ingrained set of tactical principles, and he wasted no time in implementing them at the Veltins Arena. Overnight, Schalke began playing a high-intensity pressing game that has defined Wagner's short managerial career. His team looked to press the ball high up the pitch, winning possession in dangerous areas that could lead to immediate attempts on goal, and for the first half of the season, it worked a treat. Whilst Schalke could rarely be described as having dominated a game or ever appeared totally convincing, they did win games. Just past the halfway stage, 18 games into the season, Schalke only had three defeats to their name. They had won 3-1, away at RB Leipzig, and they were fifth in the table, still optimistic about their chances of qualifying for the Champions League. But while Schalke received a decent chunk of good fortune during the first half of the season, their luck would run out from January through to June. Wagner's pressing high of the pitch had proved effective for the Royal Blues, but when it failed, they were largely impotent, suffering from a major dearth of creativity outside of balls into the box from wide areas and the mercurial talents of Amin Harrit. On January 25th, 2020, Schalke were beaten 5-0 by Bayern Munich. They haven't won a Bundesliga game since. As mentioned, they have played 26 games in the league during that time, taking just 9 points from a possible 78. The longest winless streak in the history of the Bundesliga came during the bizarre 1965-66 season, when Tasmania Berlin were handed a Bundesliga place without ever winning promotion since the DFB wanted a representative from the capital city after Hertha were kicked out of the division due to illegal financial behaviour. Tasmania were utterly out of their depth amassing only 8 points all season and going 31 games without a win. And yet Schalke is so bad right now that no one in Germany would be particularly surprised to see Tasmania's undesirable 54-year record ended by the club from Gelsenkirchen over the next 6 games. Schalke's downturn in fortunes came about partly because of an injury crisis, it has to be said, but also due to a total loss of confidence and increasingly fractured relationships off the pitch. Whilst the second half of the season was pretty wretched for Schalke on the pitch as they dropped from 5th to 12th place, finishing the season only 5 points above the relegation playoffs and a whopping 25 points off the Champions League places that they had been eyeing around Christmas time, the problems for the club off the pitch during this time were even more worrisome. Warren Buffett once wrote that only when the tide goes out do you discover who's been swimming naked, 
making a point about how oftentimes it is only in the aftermath of a financial downturn that you begin to see which companies haven't been operating on sound business principles. Football, and the world more broadly, has suffered a severe and almost unprecedented economic downturn in 2020, and Schalke are among the most high-profile clubs who have been found to be swimming naked. As per the club's last set of financial accounts, Schalke are some 200 million euros in debt. That figure is expected to rise to 250 million euros this season as fans return only in limited numbers and the club's costly infrastructure developments continue. Schalke are currently in the process of building a new training centre behind the Veltins Arena, which is expected to cost the club 100 million euros. That is an extraordinary amount of money for a project of its type. When completed, Schalke's new facility will become the second most expensive training centre in world football, trailing only Man City's Etihad campus. Liverpool's state-of-the-art new training centre at Melwood, by comparison, cost £50 million, almost half what Schalke's facilities have set the club back. Typically, Schalke would look to offset these type of costs through player sales and matchday revenue. Schalke have long had a fantastic academy and a huge fan base. Schalke's academy, or Nappenschmied as it is officially known, and my apologies to all Germans for that pronunciation, has produced the likes of Manuel Neuer, Julian Draxler and Leroy Sane in recent times. The sales of those three players alone generated the club an estimated £112 million in revenue. Now though, the Nappenschmied is going through a bit of a dry spell, and as such, Schalke have less talent out on the pitch and less money in the bank. To make matters worse, the exception to that rule, Alexander Nubel, who came through the Schalke youth ranks to become the club's number one and one of Germany's most promising goalkeepers, left the club last summer on a free transfer to Bayern Munich. Plenty of teams have lost talented young players without a fee in the past, especially to Bayern in recent years, but for Schalke, it is becoming a bit of a worrying trend. Whilst they were able to cash in on the aforementioned trio of Neuer, Draxler and Sane, they have also lost some serious talent for derisory fees or no fee at all. In the summer of 2018, two of Schalke's best players, Leon Goretzka and Max Meyer, aged 23 and 22 respectively, both left the club on free transfers. A year earlier, they lost Syed Klasenac to Arsenal for nothing, then there was Joel Matip to Liverpool the summer before that, Christian Fuchs to Leicester City the season before that, I could go on. And whilst not all of those players were graduates of the Schalke Academy, the same point remains. Failure to tie players down and poor long-term outlook has cost the club in recent years, and that loss of revenue is difficult to make up and next to impossible during a pandemic when there are only a few thousand fans in the ground and a 100 million euro training facility being built outside. Like all selling clubs, regardless of stature, Schalke's success and failure depends upon how they replace their best players, and in the recent report cards, the club doesn't score very highly. For close to a decade, Schalke have had a very Bundesliga-focused scouting program. Whilst others have been able to identify bargains in alternative markets, Schalke have primarily signed players from mid to lower end Bundesliga teams, which has inevitably led to them having to pay a premium. What's more, in recent years, Schalke have often signed increasingly mediocre players from these clubs rather than their most promising young players, almost capable older heads. If you sign mediocre players from mid to lower end Bundesliga teams, you can hardly watch on aghast as you become a mediocre mid to lower end Bundesliga team yourselves. And that is exactly what has happened to Schalke. Big money signings like Brilem Bolo, Yevon Konoplyanka, Nabil Bentaleb and Sebastian Rudi have all backfired, often being sold for a significant loss. Meanwhile, the club's mid-priced arrivals have tended to struggle to make a real impact. Between 2016 and 2020, Schalke spent 180 million euros on transfers. And what do they have to show for it other than mounting debts and a squad of players seemingly doomed for relegation? Of course, Schalke aren't the only German football club suffering during the Covid crisis, but they are in by far the worst position of the Bundesliga's current traditional big boys, and that is because of the unique way in which they are structured. Most of you will be aware of the 50 plus 1 rule in the Bundesliga, which states that supporters must own at least 50% of a club plus one share, thus giving them a controlling interest in the management and future decision making of their club. The other 50% is then split up into limited companies, allowing for outside investment, and despite the 50 plus 1 rule, there is no lack of billionaire benefactors within the Bundesliga, whether it be at Hoffenheim or Bayer Leverkusen. Schalke are one of only a handful of Bundesliga clubs, the others made up of the division's minnows, who haven't taken that step. Schalke are 100% fan-owned, and as such, have far more reliance on their supporters for funding. 
Schalke have the second most members of any team in German football with 153,000, a tally exceeded by only Bayern Munich. Last season, supporters were asked to waive refunds on tickets for the last four home games of the season, though they weren't even allowed to attend them, so dire has Schalke's financial situation become. This has led to a pocket of people calling for a revised structure in the club, more in line with the nation's other leading teams. But that's a difficult idea to win people over with in Gelsenkirchen. Schalke is a deeply working class club that has long taken pride in remaining close to its roots. Anti-establishment sentiments make the idea of accepting too much outside investment and control unpalatable to some, who view Schalke as unspoiled and untouched by many of the vices of the modern game. Schalke's former chairman, Clemens Tonys, ruled out a structural change last season, but the current model no longer seems viable. And as Schalke's financial woes and performances continue to deteriorate, calls for change are only likely to increase. A majority vote of 75% of Schalke supporters would be required to implement such a change, though. And right now, it seems unlikely that there would be that degree of support. Tony's himself resigned in June, the meat mogul and sausage-based billionaire, having faced a porter pressure to do so not just because of Schalke's struggles, but primarily due to a coronavirus outbreak at a slaughterhouse that he part owns, and the fans felt that he showed a lack of care for the health and safety of his workers. Many Schalke fans also feel angry about the layoff of low-paid staff as a cost-cutting measure recently, which is perceived as having betrayed the club's principles. Schalke's struggles during the second half of last season have not just been maintained this season, but severely worsened. David Wagner's side began the season with an 8-0 defeat to European champions Bayern Munich, and they have shipped 31 goals in the first 10 games of this season. Wagner was sacked himself at the end of September and replaced by former Germany under-18s boss Manuel Baum, but there has been no new manager bounce at the Veltins Arena. Then came the news, just over two weeks ago, that the club had suspended Amin Arit and Nabil Bentaleb and terminated Vedad Ibisevic's contract. Ibisevic got into a heated clash in training with assistant manager Noldo the previous week, but a statement put out by the club claimed that they would be parting ways for sporting reasons unrelated to the incident. Arit and Bentaleb have both been frozen out and told to train alone, Arit with the intention that he will return with an improved attitude, and Bentaleb because the club has long wanted rid of him and now feels that he is doing more harm than good to the first team. It is an omnishambles of epic proportions for one of Germany's biggest clubs, and even their own technical director, Michael Reschke, has talked about his despair at watching the club tear itself apart. It's difficult to find many positives when looking at the situation at Schalke right now. The club's decline has been steep, and it is getting steeper. Now on their 19th manager within the last 15 years, Schalke have a squad littered with average players who are playing below average football. They are absolutely drained of confidence, and now two of their most talented, albeit occasionally troublesome and deeply inconsistent players, have been frozen out of the club, in a situation of ongoing conflict. Schalke's financial plight is severe, but with their conveyor belt of youth talent having malfunctioned, they have no major assets or ways in which to generate cash. All whilst they construct what is likely to be the second most expensive training centre in world football, but what is also likely to be a second Bundesliga training centre nonetheless. A structural change may be the only route out of this mess for the seven-time German champions, but that would be incredibly difficult to stomach, perhaps even worse than relegation, in the eyes of many Schalke fans. It is bleak, but I will try to end on a positive note nonetheless. There is still some talent in the Schalke squad, even if we haven't seen much of it this season. Suat Serdar is a talent, and he is still only 23. 20-year-old Welshman Rabi Matondo has a bright future ahead of him, and should get increased game time due to the lack of competition in the Schalke squad. And then there's Amin Arit, who, if he can worm his way back into the Schalke first team, has plenty to offer. Schalke are by no means the first German giants to suffer a long-term decline. In fact, they are part of a growing trend, joined by the likes of Hamburg, Nuremberg, Stuttgart and Kaiserslautern, all of whom currently or in recent years have found themselves outside of Germany's top flight. Schalke have been a Bundesliga team since 1991, but although unthinkable only a couple of years ago, relegation might not even be the worst thing to happen to the Royal Blues. As they look increasingly doomed, whatever the club's fate this season, it is vital that they begin to take more of a long-term outlook. They need to appoint a manager, whether it is Baum, hopefully, or whether it is someone else, who they have faith in building something bigger than just navigating the choppy waters of the next few months. They cannot afford to sacrifice their youth development, which has sustained the club for a generation and will ultimately determine their future. 
Pain in the short term seems inevitable, but Schalke's situation is so perilous that they must now ensure that they don't go down the same road as a team like Kaiserslautern who currently find themselves only a couple of points above the third league of relegation zone, which leads me rather nicely into telling you that if you enjoyed today's video, I have made a similar video about Kaiserslautern's even more dramatic decline, for now at least, which you will find a link to either on your screen now or in only a moment's time. Anyhow, thank you all for watching today's video and my commiserations to Schalke fans and solidarity as a long-suffering Hull City fan. Hit the like button if you enjoyed today's video, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments, and make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications for HITC7s. Oh, and you can also find me on Twitter or Instagram, should you wish to do so, via the username at HITC7s.